Hey guys, this is Josh. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Movement Youth. For now, let's head to this week's message at Collective, which is every Wednesday night at 645. I, I think it'd be cool to go to the year 3000. I have a few questions uh, that I want to find out. How many of you guys think we're going to have hover cars in a thousand years? A thousand years, we're going to have hover cars? By round of applause, hover cars? 30 years? That's a bold, that's a bold number. Uh, here's the thing, here's the thing. I think if we were going to have hover cars, we would have had them already. That's maybe a hot take. I don't know if that's super popular. I don't think it's going to happen. I think some, for some reason, it's just never going to be all that practical. We're not going to get hover cars. Did I really disappoint you just now? I'm really sorry. Maybe, I'm, you know, I'm not, I don't know everything. Maybe we're going to have hover cars one day. We have flying cars. Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, sure, we have airplanes. But I mean, in like common use, I know flying cars, but like in common use, I mean, Tony Stark had flying cars in the old part of the movie. Anyways, um, I wonder if there's going to be flying cars. I wonder if the earth is still going to be here in a thousand years. Anybody, just out of curiosity, you think it's still going to be here? Round of applause. Round of applause, you think it's still going to be here? The earth? I don't know. Some people think that, like, we're not taking a good care of the earth. Some people think Jesus is going to come back before a thousand years. Who knows? I have no idea. Um, I just don't, I don't, I want to know what it's going to look like. Here's what I think, though. Here's what I think. I think most of us are probably more concerned about our future than something that's going to happen in the year 3000, right? How many of you would agree with that? You'd agree with that? You're more interested, you care more about what's going to happen in your future. Some of you guys are like, a thousand years from now, I'm going to be long gone. I could care less. I don't care if the earth is still here. Uh, <laughs> some of you guys could really care less. You're like, that's not even going to be my grandkids. That's going to be like great, 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 great grandkids. So well, why does that matter to me? I think people are more concerned about their immediate future because it's kind of scary. How many of you, you would agree, at times, at times, the future, your future, 5, 10, 20 years from now, can be kind of scary? Show of hands, show of hands, just honest, because you don't know what it's going to be like, right? You don't know if it's going to go well. You don't know if it's going to go terribly. You don't know if you're going to be famous like the Jonas Brothers or if you're going to be like, like you know, you're a loser. You don't know if you're going to have uh, the job of your dreams or a really crummy job that makes you absolutely miserable. You, ladies, you could be married to the man of your dreams with, who's big and strong and handsome and everything you ever hoped for, or you could be like lonely. You could be like, not, you never find true love. That's like, oh no. And some of you guys, that you'd already considered that and it really stressed you out. Some of you had never considered that until I placed that idea in your head. So I'm really, really sorry. Uh, I don't think anybody's gonna end up lonely forever. But here, the future is scary because it's full of what ifs. What if I never find like my calling? What if I, what if I go to the wrong college? What if I marry the wrong girl? What if, what if, what if, what if? And I want to talk about the what ifs tonight. Uh, I want to talk about the future because I think it's uh, your future because it's something that we don't talk about all the time in church. And whether you're here tonight and you're a Christian and you're like, I know all the books of the Bible, I could quote them to you backwards and forwards, or you're here tonight and you're like, I'm not a Christian, I think these are things that kind of scare everybody. Like if you're Buddhist or Jewish, I don't know, whatever walk of life you come from, I think everybody is at least a little bit concerned or has questions about the future. You're curious about the what ifs. Well, here's three questions I want us to be able to ask tonight. Uh, answers, rather, to the questions that I want us to figure out tonight. Uh, am I making the right decision? Am I making the right decision when it comes to college or a girlfriend or a career path or even what high school to go to next semester, next year, for crying out loud? Am I heading in the right direction? Am I going in the, am I, am I, in, am I hot, God? Am I, am I cold? Am I in, uh, yes or no? Am I going in the right direction? And then the other question I want us to ask is, is everything going to turn out okay? I think there are ways we can look at the Bible, we can look at what God's already taught us and, and figure out some answers to some of those questions. Um, so if you guys think we can do it, uh, say, I think we can do it. Let's try that one more time. I didn't give you really clear instructions. If you, th if you think we can do it, we can find some answers in the Bible, say, I think we can do it. There we go. Much, much better. We are going to turn now to the book of Psalm, uh, Psalm 23. Go to Psalm 23. <laughs> Psalm 23. The 23rd Psalm in the book of Psalms. Uh, this one's written by David, and it's a really, really cool uh, part of the Bible. I think it's very interesting. Uh, Pastor David and Pastor Jordan at our Southwest campus have actually been going through a lot of the Psalms. Uh, they, we just finished going through a lot of the Psalms. Uh, but look at this with me here. We're going to read Psalm 23. We're just going to read verses 1 through 4 for time's sake. Um, and then I want to pray, and then we'll get into the message. So read this with me. 
This is a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul, and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are my rod, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Hey, let's pray, and then we'll get into it. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here tonight. Lord, thank you for uh, helping us to be able to understand your word and the gift it is that we can just open it so freely in this country. Lord, I pray we wouldn't take it for granted that we would uh, apply your word to our lives and help us, God, understand how we can have some certainty and some peace about our futures and about the unknown. In your name we pray, amen, amen. Hey, go ahead and turn to your neighbor and say, pay attention. Because some of you, you know, you got some chatty neighbors, you got some neighbors that like to, you got to, you like to text, and you're like, no, 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 I'm on my phone, I swear. Uh, I'm, I'm on the Bible on my phone. No, you're not. You're Snapchatting. You're doing all kinds of stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. You're not going to hell or anything like that, but we've got the Bible verses up on the screen, so you can uh, pay attention. You don't need to be on your phone, or you could always bring a paper Bible. That works, too. Um, uh, I'm, I'm excited for this message because it's something that has really meant a lot to me as I studied it and as I learned these lessons growing up in college, especially. So um, here's, here's what we notice in this passage of Scripture, that David compares God to a shepherd, right? He compares God to a shepherd, and David would know something about shepherding, about being a shepherd, right? Because when he writes this, he's most likely already king at this point. He's king of Israel, and he's doing a really, really great job for the most part, except for a couple of mistakes. But he's able to look back and be like, listen, in the same way that I was looking after those sheep as a little kid, you know, before I was king, God is looking after me. He's looking after all of his children, and he's doing an incredible job, and he's just so caring and loving. And if that means if God is the shepherd, then who's the sheep? We are, right? That's us. We're the sheep. And you might be, listen, some of you guys, you grew up with some, some beanie babies. Anybody know what a beanie baby is? Our 90s kids especially know what the beanie babies is, uh, are, but... Some of you guys are like, oh, I mean, we're the sheep. And you're like, sheep? What, what God means by us being sheep, what David means when he says that we're like sheep is like, we're cute, and we're cuddly, and we're soft, and like, God just wants to hug us and love us because we're so sweet, right? No, not really. That's not actually what David is getting at here. He's not insulting anybody in the room. He's, if anything, insulting himself. He's calling himself, first of all, the sheep. Uh, But here's the truth about sheep. Sure, they're soft, right? Uh, They get sheared for their wool, and people make clothes out of them. Uh, If you're wearing a a wool sweater right now, your Christmas sweater, then you probably have a sheep to thank somewhere for that. Um, But the truth about sheep is that they are stupid. Sheep are really, really stupid. Sheep are dumb, they are directionless, and they uh, they are defenseless. In fact, now that I think about it, if that, that is kind of how you could outline tonight's sermon. Dumb, defenseless, uh, I said that out of, out of turn, dumb, directionless, and defenseless. That is pretty much what a sheep is. That's pretty much the way, way that David is understanding himself and the way that we need to understand ourselves. And you're like, this is not an uplifting sermon. I, I liked it better when we were cute and cuddly and soft and adorable, right? And God was going to give us all the hugs. Sure, you can get a hug, hug from God when you get to heaven. But, but here on earth, sometimes we don't always make the best decisions. Sometimes we don't always know the direction to go in. And sometimes we are kind of hopelessly uh, outmatched by the world around us, and we need God to defend us. We need God to look out for us. And so um, uh, sheep are not all that fantastic. So uh, point number one. I know this sounds terrible. It sounds awful as I'm saying it. Point number one, we're dumb. If you take notes, write this down, we're dumb. And you're going to go home, and your parents are going to be like, what did you learn at church tonight? Uh, Pastor told me I'm stupid. That's not what I want you to walk away from. That's not what I want you to walk away with. Uh, But write this down, and it'll make more sense as we go along. Without a shepherd, sheep on their own, without a shepherd, will wander off and die most of the time. They'll either starve, or they'll get attacked by a wild animal, or they will uh, uh, go somewhere that they shouldn't. There's a story that came out uh, from eastern Turkey a few years ago, and uh, there's a lot of parts of the world that still have you know, traditional shepherds, just like you know, David was a shepherd in the Bible. And there are these shepherds in uh, Turkey that uh, had a, a total catastrophe happen with their sheep. 
So they had about 1,500 sheep in this big flock of, of, of sheep. Sheepin, sheeps, sheepin, sheeps. It's just sheep, kind of like deers is, right? Uh, so they had about 1,500 sheep in their flock, and they went to go cook some breakfast in the morning, and they weren't paying attention, and the lead sheep decided to go running off of a 50-foot cliff. And that's terrible, right? I mean, sheep are dumb. Well, here's where it gets worse. All 1,499 of them decided to follow the lead sheep right off the edge of the cliff. And I want you to picture this in your head. It's terrible. It's terrible. I know it's awful. 50-foot cliff. You do the math. A lot of them died. 400 of these sheep died. And you're like, what? I thought you said all 1,500 of them went off the cliff. Yeah, but the last 1,100 were padded by the 400 <laughs> dead sheep in the middle of the ravine. It sounds terrible. And I, sh I told myself I was not going to laugh if I, as I told this story. But sheep are dumb. And sheep do not know how to think for themselves. And that's what David is really trying to get to us. Here's what a sheep needs. A sheep needs a shepherd who will guide him and point him away from destruction that he can't see. And sometimes the sheep will be like trying to go this way and go this way and this way, and the shepherd's got to like whack him with his staff and like, no, there's a cliff over there. You're going to die if you go that way, right? So if the shepherd's paying attention, he's doing his, God, his job, and God actually says in, in John 10, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. So we got a quality shepherd. Don't worry. He's not going to you know, get distracted cooking his breakfast. But a sheep needs a shepherd who's going to guide him. We need a God, we need to submit to our Heavenly Father who guides us with our decision making. He knows what we need and what we want. How many of you know that there's a big difference between what you need and what you want? Somebody say amen. I mean, it's tough. You're like, amen, I guess. But I really, really need a new Xbox. You know, that's, that's what I was just telling my wife the other day. She didn't want me to get an Xbox. And I'm like, but, but Janae, I need it. It's for ministry. I really, really need it. I'm going to play it with some of the guys from youth, so it's for Jesus. Can I get an Xbox, please? Amen, thank you. Uh, she still says no Xbox. Uh, but there's a difference between what you need and what you want. Somebody said it this way. If you don't have it today and you're still alive, you don't need it. Think about that for a second. If you don't have it right now, you don't need it. You might need it tomorrow. You might need it in an hour. But if you don't have it right now, then you don't need it. God knows what you need. He knows, on top of that, what you want. And he knows what's going to hurt us. God is not this cosmic killjoy. I don't know who taught me that phrase, but I love it. Because that's kind of the way that I grew up thinking about God. Right? If you are a Christian, you've been a Christian for a long time, or maybe you're kind of just checking this whole Jesus thing out, you might think your impression of Christianity might be that the Bible is just a big, long list of rules, right? You can nod your head. You don't got to be like, amen, right? But you can nod your head if you've maybe thought that before. You had that impression of, of the Bible or of Christianity. Sometimes we think the Bible is just this big, long list of do's and don'ts. Like, don't do that, and do this. And don't do that. And stop that. That's like kind of the way that I read the Bible for most of my life growing up. And I was a pastor's kid. Well, uh, some of those rules were put there to protect the people of Israel. Because they were like, when you go look at some of the, the laws in the Old Testament. We were talking about this in our, eighth, our uh, 830 life group this last Sunday morning. How many of you guys, there's only like a dozen of you, you, you wake up for the 830 life group, that early life group? Come on, there's got to be a couple of you guys there. I see you. I see you. They're, they won't even like raise their hands and be like, no, nah, I'm not that crazy. But we were talking about this because there's laws in the Bible that say like, hey, don't eat pork. And the Israelites at the time might have been like, God, you are so unfair. What's the deal with us not being allowed to eat pork? All of our neighbors, the other nations, they're eating bacon and they're living it up. Well, we found out later that pork was actually really, really dangerous to eat and to consume if you didn't cook it right. So God was like, no, 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 I'm just trying to protect you. Just don't, don't, don't do that. That's, that's not a good idea. God gives us these laws, not because he's this cosmic killjoy, but because he says, no, there's a cliff on the other end, and you're a dumb, I love you, but you're a dumb little sheep, and you can't see it, so don't go that way. And when we're sheep, we, we get stubborn sometimes. Sheep are stubborn. We're like, no, I'm going this way. I'm going to do it, and, he, and, and then he whacks us with his stick. I, said, I told you don't go that way. Think about it this way. Sometimes we think, well, God is just, he's out to make everything illegal. Everything that I want to do that is enjoyable, the Bible says you can't do it. Like, what's that about? How many of you, just raise your hand, you don't, you don't got to shout in hallelujah, but it kind of feels good to gossip. It does, in the moment, it feels kind of good to gossip. Don't let me hang alone on this, come on, come on. In the moment, in the moment, 
gossip feels kind of good. I'm like, oh, give me the juicy details. Tell me all about it. I'll, I'm praying for them. It's okay. I'm just, I'm going to add them to my prayer list. Tell me all the dirty details, right? I, I, gossip feels good in the moment. And God says, don't gossip. Jesus was really, really clear. Don't gossip about one another. And it's not because he says, hey, you enjoy that? Oh, well, I'm here to put a stop to that. You know, are you having a good time with your gossip? Illegal. That's not the God of the Bible. That's not the God of the Bible. Jesus knows that if you gossip about your friends, if you talk badly about one another, it's going to erode your friendship and you're going to end up with no friends. You're going to be completely lonely. This is not, this, uh, so here's what I want us to understand. When, when David says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he's saying, listen, God knows what I need and what I want and I need to listen to the shepherd. I need to take advice from the shepherd and not just what seems right to me. The second thing I want you to notice, I get this really from verse 2 and 3, where he says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We're dumb, but we're also directionless. That's really in verses 2 and 3 if you're taking notes. Don't miss this. Without a shepherd, they, I already told you, they'd wander off the cliff, they could do that, they could eat by wild animals, all kinds of things like that. But Without a shepherd, if you just leave them by themselves, most of the sheep in that flock will stay in the exact same spot. This is true of sheep. Like you can, you're gonna, all you guys are going to be Googling sheep facts on your way home. Don't text or Google and drive. But this is true. If you leave sheep by themselves, they will stay in that one spot where there's some grass. They'll eat all the grass until there's none left. And then they'll stay there, even though there's no more grass, and then they'll start eating one another's droppings. And when there's no more of that to eat, they will starve and die. That's kind of pathetic, right? Sheep are kind of like the most useless animal in the entire world. It, 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 you don't need any lower than a sheep, but over and over again, David calls us a sheep. Jesus calls us a sheep. We're like, okay, God, we get it. We get it. But a sheep needs to be guided. It needs to be led in the direction towards green pastures. It needs to be taken from where they're at to the next spot. Whenever you're thinking about a decision that you've got to make, whenever you're stressing about, oh, what college do I go to? What, what, who do I date? Who do I not date? You know, things like that. You, you got to ask the Holy Spirit who lives in you. If you're a follower of Jesus, that God dwells in you. God, what, what should I do about this? I need your guidance. I need your direction. I need your help with this entire thing. I think this is really cool. I didn't get this at first. Uh, in verse 2, he says, he, he makes me lie down in, in green pastures. He leads me be, beside still waters. And I always read that verse, still waters, and I was like, oh, that's so peaceful. He means like he takes the sheep to like a, a quiet little lagoon where they can put their feet up and like just, you know, sip some tea or something like that. That's kind of what I pictured because I, I, was, I was probably eight when that idea first came to me, and it just stuck. But what that's actually talking about is sheep can't drink from fast-moving water. How many of you guys went to camp at the peak in Okoe? We did the whitewater rafting. We went to whitewater. You got a show of hands, round of applause, whichever you prefer, clap, and raise your hand at the same time. That'll just be a little bit off time like that. You went to, to, to camp at the peak. We did some whitewater rafting. If a sheep went up to drink out of that, he'd fall in and drown. He'd be gone. I guess I, I, I'm just like learning all about sheep all day long, and I guess wool doesn't sink, uh, sinks pretty fast when it gets wet. So they're incredibly clumsy. They can't come up to fast moving water. So the shepherd has to take them to somewhere that is still where they can get a drink of water. God restores you. God heals you. Some of you guys, you've been going 90 miles an hour your entire life. You've been going, go, 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 go. You came straight from here from uh, some kind of extracurricular activity. You went to uh, cheer or dance or football and there's nothing wrong with those things, but well, football is done for most of us. You went for, to basketball practice, you came right here, and you woke up at 6.30 in the morning, you're going to go to bed at 11, 12 o'clock at night, and you need a time with God where you can, you can look back, you can reflect, you can read his word, you can soak in some of that goodness. Uh, and here's the other thing that I, I thought was really, really neat. Uh, notice this, and maybe you just read past it like I did. In verse 2, it says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me. That's an interesting way to put it, because you would think, Hey, if we're sheep, like we like green pastures, right? That's kind of our thing. That's like our, our, our dream. Well, sometimes, sometimes we don't always choose what's best for us. Here's what's really cool about sheep. If a sheep keeps wandering off, doing its own thing, like, bah, I'm going this way. I don't know. I just had, I've been listening. I was bound to do a sheep noise at some point tonight. I just had to get it out of my system. That was the, that was the time to do it, I guess. 
Sheep says, I'm going this way. If he keeps wandering off over and over again, and the shepherd just gets really tired of tracking him down, going, where did that stupid sheep go? At some point, it sounds really mean, and you, you, you have permission to say, aw, but the shepherd will actually intentionally break the, sh- the sheep's legs. It will, and then he'll carry the sheep on his back until those legs are healed from one place to another. Like, you're going you're gonna to learn. You're, you're not going to wander away again, are you? No, you're not. And when those legs heal, the sheep, never leaves the, sh- leaves the shepherd's side everywhere he goes. And I just imagine, like, sheep can't talk. That's silly. But I just kind of wonder, like, the sheep starts wandering off, and the shepherd's like, hey, where are you going? Nowhere. I'm not going anywhere. Don't, please don't break my legs. Some of you guys, you've been in a situation where you felt like you hit a dead end. And you're like, God, I thought I knew the direction you were taking me, or I really didn't care what direction you were taking me, but I went this way. And you feel like you've hit a dead end. You feel like you've hit rock bottom. And you're like, this plan I had is not working out. Maybe, just maybe, God, he's kind of breaking your legs a little bit. He's trying to say, hey, uh, you're supposed to stick with me. You're supposed to be with me all along. Why are you wandering off doing your own thing? I didn't tell you to go to that school. I didn't tell you to do any of those things. Uh, You're completely going against biblical principles. Some of these things, uh, in the end, it might be an issue because you're ignoring God's leading. You're, you're, just, you're just saying, hey, this is, this is not for me. I'm doing my own thing. Uh, I'm kind of scanning my notes. I feel like there's, a, there's just so much goodness in these four verses, but I feel like there's something that I'm forgetting. Um, let's keep on moving. Let's keep on moving. Look at verse 4 one more time with me. It says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Uh, sheep <laughs> are kind of pathetic. Sheep are really kind of pathetic. If, if a wolf comes after them, if a bear comes after them, or if anything like that comes in and is trying to eat them, and, and you might ask, well, what kind of predators does a sheep have? Pretty much everything. Like ants probably could kill sheep if they got enough of them. Because sheep, they're not fast. They can't run away. Especially when they've got a lot of wool. They don't even really run. They kind of just waddle. And like, oh, no, there's a bear. And they just kind of waddle away. Like, it's, it's really kind of funny. Listen, watch some sheep videos when you leave here because it, it took more of my time yesterday and today than I would like to admit because it's really funny to watch them run away. But sheep, they, they're not fast. They don't have any way to defend themselves either. They don't have sharp teeth. They don't have tusks. They don't have claws or anything like that. They don't have a bazooka on their back to, to back off wolf. You can't have this. Sheep have no way to defend themselves, and uh, uh, really, this is, it's kind of funny, it's sad, but the only way that a sheep can really, like, the, if, if, if predators come, if, if a wolf attacks, and there's no shepherd there to protect them, then they start just running around in circles, in circles in some kind of chaos as a big, like, clump of sheep, and they're pretty much just hoping that, like, some, the wolf eats their friend and not them. Like, so that's, the, that's their best hope as a sheep of survival. Like, they're coming... Uh, you know, good luck, everybody. I mean, somebody's going to die. Rock, paper, scissors. You know, who's going to be on the outside of the circle? That's, that's, they, listen, sheep can't even bark. How many of you guys have seen a chihuahua? You know what I'm talking about when I say, which, who had, anybody have a chihuahua by any chance? You have a chihuahua? You really do? Okay. I don't like chihuahuas. I, I'm sure your dog is fantastic. It's probably the exception, but I don't like chihuahuas because they got way too much bark for their bite. They are these puny little things, but they still come out, even if you're like walking in your own yard, they come up and they're like, wah, 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 wah. chihuahuas are annoying, but they can still get somebody or something or some kind of cat to back up because they got to bark. Sheep don't bark. Everybody on the count of three, you've been wanting to do it this entire, th- this entire night. I'm going to say bah. On the count of three, one, two, three, bah. That was not intimidating at all. Not intimidating at all. Nothing is backing off. A sheep is totally defenseless. It hasn't got a prayer in the world. And here's why I think this is so important, because uh, we need a shepherd to protect us. Whenever you're afraid of whatever the future has in store, maybe you're afraid it's going to be some failure. Maybe you're afraid, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to suck, I'm going to be terrible, I'm not going to get good grades, and then I'm going to fail out, and then I'm not going to, I'm not going to, relax. Take some shelter in the peace of a God who loves you. If you're afraid, maybe there's actual physical harm. You need to pray to God to deliver you from that. Maybe, there's, maybe you're, you're not being attacked in some kind of harm, but maybe you need protection from some temptation. And you're like, I've been struggling 
this one person, they just keep coming on to me, and then so-and-so texted me, hey, you wanna, and I says, no, but they keep asking, and I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna give in. You need to take refuge in a God that protects you from that. He says he's never gonna put you in a situation where uh, the temptation is too strong for you to handle. Never. There's, he's always gonna give you an opportunity, a way out. Um, you never need to be afraid of any of those things. Uh, you need to be able to have that kind of confidence. I love this verse. It says, your rod and your staff they comfort me. And I already told you, sometimes, sometimes the shepherd's got to use that staff to kind of steer his own sheep. But why is David able to say, hey, your rod and your staff, sometimes you whack me over the head with them, but sometimes they give me comfort because he knows if somebody comes after him, if anybody's got something to say about David, if anybody's got something to say about you because you're a Christian, they want to fight, or the, the devil's tempting you, or there's something coming after you, you are, you are able to look it in the eye. You're able to look that lion or that bear or that wolf in the eye and say, back up, because my shepherd carries a big stick, and you don't want to mess with him, because you mess with him, he's going to mess with you. You mess with me, he's going to mess with you, right? You need to be able to have that confidence that the shepherd... God, the, the Father who loves you, cares more for you about anybody that you know. I love this line. Uh, pastor Jordan, who's our Southwest Campus pastor, uh, he said it a few weeks ago, and it really stuck with me. He said, those who fear God don't fear tomorrow. Those who fear God don't fear tomorrow. They're not worried about whatever's coming in your future if you are trusting in God, if you know that he's in charge of this entire thing, he's guiding you, and you're doing your very best to listen to him. Listen, if you're making some decisions, you need to consult with your shepherd. If you're worried about your future, you need to consult with a God who loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. You need to see what he has to say in prayer. You need to read his word. Sometimes, sometimes, you guys are praying about things. I, I don't mean you guys. I mean, sometimes we pray about things that we don't need to pray about. Does that sound like heresy? You're like, Zach, you're supposed to pray all the time. My Bible says so. Here's what I mean. Sometimes we pray about things that God has, has already told us in the Bible. Well, I'm graduating high school next week, and my, my boyfriend said I could move in with him. I wonder if I should do that. Nope. But God, should I move in with my boyfriend? No. He already told you that in his word. He already told you sexual immorality should not be named among you. There are a lot of things here in the Bible we don't need to pray about. He's already told us. And then you need to consult his word. You need to look closely at what the Bible has to say about that issue, the decision that you're trying to make. And then you need to talk to some of your pastors, your life group leaders, your team leaders. Hey, I got this big decision coming up. What do you think about it? Their word is not gospel. Their word is not absolute truth. Well, my team leader said I should go to... Uh, California for school, you know, that doesn't mean you should go to California, just, but, but, but weigh the counsel of somebody who's walked closely with God a little bit longer than you have, and in the end, I really don't think that the future is anything that we need to be afraid of. I don't think it's anything that we need to lose sleep over, and, and I'm guilty of it sometimes, but we need to really, really, really trust the Holy Spirit, the, the shepherd that loves us. I'm going to close with this line. Look at this. We almost missed it. At the very beginning, David starts off by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I don't know if you know this, shepherd were kind of, uh, sheep were, were practically money back in the day. They were worth something. They had value. Shepherds, uh, when I told you that story about the sheep running off the cliff, they estimated that those shepherds lost something like $75,000 for those 400 sheep that ran off the cliff. Like that stinks. Like I, I bet somebody got fired for that over breakfast, for crying out loud. But your heavenly Father, God that loves you, loves you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for you, values you too much to let you wander into destruction, to let you wander off of a cliff, to let you wander into the mouth of a predator. He has your best interests in mind, and so don't push and, 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 and rebel against the laws that he set up for you, the rules that we see Jesus is teaching us throughout the whole New Testament. Don't push back against that because you've got to know the Holy Spirit loves you. God loves you more than you could possibly know, and we just can't see the big picture.